and there it's recording. It's cool. Recording. Okay. So this is the IPFS All Hands. Today it's Monday, the 16th of October, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and we have started a recording already. And now if people have some more agenda items they would like to add, right now there is just one item and we have 60 minutes. And also if you have some demo, you want to show us something cool, that will be awesome as well. So please add your agenda items if you have it. Um, then, as a first point, uh, I want to talk about the Barcelona Hack Day that I am planning to organize. The preliminary date is the 24th of October, and still haven't decided on a venue. I am going around to some places. I'm gonna see how, how it looks, so we get a nice, nice location. Uh, but the plan for the event is to have a couple of presentations and then spend some time on hacking on IPFS stuff. So if you are around in Barcelona, you're welcome to come. And also if you are not in Barcelona, uh, the plan is to set up some venue on IRC uh, so we can do it online and with remote people as well. So you're welcome to attend remotely as well. So that's it. Anyone questions or anything? It's pretty clear, I think. Cool, okay. And then David wants to take about, talk about priorities and P0s. I have my hand up. <laughs> I have a couple of questions. One of them is, are you going to use meetup.com to announce the meetup? In the past, it has been very successful. Like meetup.com is a good, good tool to broadcast the event. Um, yeah. Are you going to have a strict schedule? Is it going to be easy for people to join? When is it so appear? I do know that we have used Meetup in the past. I am not aware of any like shared account we can use to like publish events. Usually I've used like T2 to, for the attendant registration stuff, but it will be a good idea to put it on Meetup as well to, to like expand the effect. And also the Ethereum Meetup in Barcelona have said that they are willing to put it as an external event as well. I don't know, but we can... Meetup.com yeah. as a weird like company slash org structure to like create meetups. Like right now we have a bunch of meetup.com accounts created, but they have to be focused on each city because they will literally broadcast for everyone in the city. And it's like there is no IPFS meetup.com for planet Earth. Um, and so we have one for Seattle, we have one for Portland, we have one for Lisbon, but uh, it, they are been created with our personal accounts. So for example, each mm -hmm. personal account can hold till three meetups for free. And then you have to get into this very complex um, or program that they have, uh, which, or you are massive, or it would not really be easy to manage. It is something that we should evaluate for the future. We are still like figuring out how to do events and how to like provide these tools for the community. But you should be able to create an account like an IPFS Barcelona with your like, mm -hmm normal email address and, okay. and it should do the job. And if you have any questions, so, on that, you can ask me because I've said about it already in the past. Okay. All right. We can have a shot about that. Then. Cool. Okay. Any other questions about the event or anything around it? Okay. Then we let David speak about the priorities and please was. All right, so what I want to share and ask for feedback is so like this quarter is already like one third over. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, we have a lot of plans. And historically, we have like created markdown documents with kind of like milestones and roadmaps, and like then we created repos with issues, and like we then use Waffle boards and, and, and more issues. And we, we experimented a lot. And right now it's not like clear which tool strategy plan we are going to use. It is something that um, we still have to figure out a little bit better. However, we do know that we want to prioritize the things that are most important. So if you have seen repos like JSIPFS and YPFS, you will see that there's labels now P0, P1, P2, P3. That's order of importance. P0 is more important. 
P4 is less important. And Victor last week created a tool that populated all of the IPFS, the peer-to-peer multi-formats, and IPLB repos with all of these labels. So now they are available for everyone to use. And the way that we plan at least to do some of the work of communicating the roadmap is by labeling the issues, which are very critical for the project. And that kind of like signal what we are prioritizing so that everyone can um, help achieve those. Um, I want to share with everyone what I'm going to do to tag all of the labels, especially on JSIPFS where and this might be used for the GoIPFS project as well, uh, or it might be used for like infrastructure, it might be used for cluster, and I just want to share how am I going to be able to handle tagging over 300 repos, maybe over 3,000 issues. So um, let me share my screen with all of you. By the way, is my connection going clear for everyone? I want to make sure everyone can see my screen. All right. Okay. Can you see like an empty web page? His <laughs> waffle board is not floating. Come on, waffle board. Okay, it's still loading. We have a lot of repos attached to a single waffle board. Kind of like, oops, it spans once in a while. Yeah, so. Um, the way that I'm going to do this on like labeling all the things is, so as I said, Victor added the label to every single repo. And so I went to project settings and I went to columns and I created a new column. And I, I already created P0, but I'm going to create P1. And then I select the label respectively. And here I'm going to select P1. And now I can, Go save board viewing. Uh, so now the traditional thing can then style just like move issues to the column. So I can like say, oh, add progress bar test is P0, right? The tricky part is if I put it here, now waffle things, oh, this label. Is a, like this, this issue is a P0, so I'm going to level it with P0. That's really useful. But if someone starts working on this, the waffle board is going to like move this from uh, P0 to in progress, and then it loses the level. So that's the problem. What we need to do, and this is kind of like uh, boring and annoying, is we actually need to do it all at once, like move all of the issues to the respective columns, and then once we are satisfied with this thing, we go to project settings, uh, columns again, and we delete the column. Once we do this, now Waffleboard will leave the label there and do not like change it anymore. So what I'm proposing is, um, or this is a way to label a lot of issues from a lot of repos because it gives you like a clear view, like you can then style, and you do this once. Um, you create a column for P0, you put all the issues there, then you delete the column, and then we freeze uh, all of the issues um, in a specific point, like we take a snapshot, and we, we map it out and say, okay, from all the things in all the projects, these are the things that are most important for all the projects. And like, let's focus on that for this quarter. And, and yeah, like, was this explanation clear? Essentially what I'm trying to do is make sure we have a way to tag a lot of issues very, very quickly without then the tool breaking the process of how we manage this project. Uh, any questions? I see some hands going to stop sharing. Victor? So how, I mean, this, this works in the beginning when we need to label a lot of issues and it, it gives us like a nice overview and everything. But then after you're deleting the column, it doesn't delete the tag, right? And then, we just see everything as in the backlog, but on the waffle board, we have an overview, but we no longer see the priority of the issues unless you go into them, right? True, but there is, uh, I don't have the URL here, but there is a way to search on GitHub search and say, search all of this org for a level P0, and it gives you the list of issues. We, we had oh, okay. that in the past. So we would do that outside waffle. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like not the best thing because we are kind of trying to, use something to show priority using multiple tools. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, this so, is yes. kind of for the, uh, so go ahead, go for it. Yeah, for the for the future, it would be good if we could get a waffle somehow to implement like swim lanes. So in the we would have vertical columns as well where we can have the priority, and then we will have the columns for the for the state. Yeah, well, one other way to to do that is just create another waffle board. The thing is, like waffle board doesn't let you to create multiple waffles for the same repo. So we, we could have like uh, IPFS. I don't know Q4, and then we have like the columns, and then we we destroy the in progress and the done, <laughs> and we just have like P0, P1, P2, P3, and like that stays static. Um, and then we have the alpha board just like to tag the issues with priority and the alpha board to actually manage from backlog to ready to done. It is like then like you have to change things twice. And and again, um, one other question that I've received is oh, but like what happens if in the middle of the quarter you have a new P0 that you have to add? That's an excellent question because um, what we are proposing is we are not necessarily going to focus on fixing every single fire in the world. We are going to fix the fires that we have identified so far when we start this quarter. And we can work on new fires, absolutely. But in order for us to be in sync and on the same page and on the same priorities, we are going to freeze what are the P0s and then like have laser target focus on solving those. So if something else appears, like can be there, we we have our priority of the priorities. Here. Another quick question. Do we have this uh, like process written down in one of the repos so far? Uh, not, not yet. Um, this is this is an idea that again, this is not me doing an official statement saying all the teams are going to do this. This is me saying, hey, I was asked with the task of living all the issues with P0s, P2s. It's really hard because we have many. Uh, this is the thing I found to make the process simpler and I wanted to share with everyone that we will have to do this so that they can benefit from it as well. So maybe I, I don't know if someone else that will have to do this or similar thing wants to comment or share if they have another idea about the process. It does okay if you haven't thought about it when you are taking more you come to the room. Yeah. So there's no more questions, we, we can move to the next uh, item. All right. Seems like we're all good. Um, so let's see. It seems like someone started writing a third agenda point, but the person hasn't really started writing anything yet. So we can move to demos in the meantime. If someone has something cool to demo, something you've been working on in the past week, something you want to talk about, just a showcase. I don't know, a nice image made in paint. I mean, I could uh, give an update that we're, we've been working on the connection closing stuff. Um, the IPVS network has gotten really, really big lately. Um, still not sure why. It's over 7,000 years at this point. And so, yeah, we, we have a connection closing branch working. Um, hopefully, you're going to merge it today, and people who want can start trying it out. Then we're going to be merging in supplemental features to it, like um, a DHT, some code for the DHT to prioritize its connections, and code for BitSwap to prioritize it, its connections, and so on for the different sub protocols. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully we get that in today or tomorrow, and then we can start trying to figure out how to make like 8,000 nodes update, and that'll be fun. Is it possible that you can show it in action? Would that be complicated to do right now? Uh, might be complicated to do. Is that, I mean, all I would be is me showing you an IPVS node starting up and then showing you the number of peers I have and then try to cause more peers to show up, which might degrade the quality of the video call. Maybe. <laughs> all right. We have any other questions? Regarding connection closing? 
I have a question. Are we planning to deploy this as a hotfix for people to start using? Because it's kind of impacting the entire network, right? Yeah, I mean, the next release, hopefully we can get out another release this week. And if we do, then that would be a two-week release, which is not uncommon. Sounds good. Right. So, any other questions? Any other demos? Pretty. Do you want a demo peer pad? Oh. Yes. Uh, I don't have it set up here. Or it looks like. Okay, let me take a look. Is it is it deployed somewhere? <laughs> what? Is it is it deployed somewhere? Not yet deployed. Like a new oh. shiny design is coming this week and next week. Right now, it's going to be two text boxes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, wait, wait, give me a sec. So the background of PeerPad is a uh, it's a note taking code snippet tool that works on top of YJS, if I'm not incorrect. Uh, for synchronizing like the text and stuff. It's like HackMD, but built on top of YPFS. And hopefully we can start dog fooding it as soon as possible. Yeah, so... Just getting the latest one here, which requires me to install dependencies. But we have time, so <laughs> I'm sure we can do this before they call it. Um, like that. I need to proceed like uh, the other stuff. Yeah, there is like PeerPath Core and PeerPath UI. PeerPath UI is what attaches core to a thing called Quill, which gives you like a nice text editor that can be rich text or markdown um, and essentially creates something similar to what you have seen on a hack pad or creep pad. Um, it has some of the primitives in place to be private, to be to like share links with other people that they can not only read, share links with other people that can not only uh, they can read and write, and so kind of like an ACL through public key crypto. Uh, but again, it, it, like the things are in place, but until we have audited it, we'll call it alpha and then have a red banner saying do not use this for certain information until it gets audited. Um, but, but that's the, the design, uh, making sure it can be used like peer to peer, completely encrypted, real private. And that no one can exfiltrate any data from PFL without the creator's consent. So let me see here. All right. All right. How are people feeling? Yes. Uh, CRDTs. CRDTs. Uh, there is um, a why like uh, there is like what so there's a bunch of CRDTs implementations. Two of the most interesting ones uh, or more developed is YJS and FormJS, and YJS has a really nice plugin feature. So we uh, got um, an IPFS connector for it that like uses IPFS to transfer the data and to store the data. And that's how it's working right now. Creating an optimized production build so that I can deploy it on, on IPFS. All right. Okay, I'm going to show you this live. Might not work. <laughs> Chills. All right, so this is pretty bad. Looks really bad right now, but like we are working on making it pretty. Don't worry. 
a uh, Adidas oh, and that's uh, markdown preview documents. And yeah, so now I guess should be able to. It says that the oh, no, no, no. on the right side. Yeah, because I probably uh, let me just clean my memory of this. So I say that. Is it because it's not an IPFS? No, sorry, sorry. There you go. No, it's, it's because I, I have um, previously used this local OS 2000 for another just to test news with the old repo and so it was breaking on an old multi other that's all the supported which was before this peer fear where we're to start so um and i just have to force it to restart the repo so now yeah like you have like a um a path here you can like explain it back down stuff like that i can you, you see here like you have the name of the path you sort of like keys of stuff like one of them is the key to write, one of them is the key to, to read. So messages, key to write means the message gets signed with that key. So other people, other peers validate the signature and therefore accept the message and put it on the TRDT. Uh, the key to read is just like a symmetric key that decrypts the messages so that you can actually consume them. You can have the key to read, which is again, just decrypting them and you might not have the key to write. And, and that's what you get like with a read only version. With a read only version, same thing, I can be, oh wait, this is not perfect. Uh, I see, you can only see one Chrome, right? You cannot see the two Chromes right now because I'm just shared. Correct. Yeah. I definitely didn't prepare this at all. Okay, so let me share the screen. Now we see both. you're muted now. And your battery is running out. I think his headphones died. Oh, yeah, and his laptop died. Okay, you, they can hear you if you talk right now, I think. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, they can hear you. Talk a little louder. You have on the left screen. <laughs> uh, here. And I, I cannot write on this one. Uh, or I can write because I can hear on the other side. This, this right side doesn't have the key to write. Yeah. Um, it might even be writing messages, it doesn't matter, because when, when you reach on the side, it checks the signature and the signature doesn't match, so it just drops it. Um, you can share with a writable address. Yeah, like say, yeah. All right. You got, you have power now, but I don't think your headphones work, so. No. Just keep talking through me. So now, I, so now I have a writable link. I can write here, and now I see. So it's, it's and there's a little feature which is really happy about this one. It's called a snapshot, snapshot feature. Um, and the snapshot means here. Is it working? My laptop might be done. No, it's it's fine. You have power. Or is PeerPad dying? Yeah. PeerPad's pretty I angry. Hmm. Okay, so the snapshot feature, I can explain what it does. Uh, it was working on version 0 0.1. The version 0 0.2 was like merged during this weekend. Um, it creates a self-contained replica of whatever path this is. So imagine like you writing an article, again, private, peer-to-peer, -peer, it's not stored in anywhere, and then you want to share with other people. 
you can create a snapshot which is going to be loaded through an IPFS hash, like it doesn't require an app at all. It's like a thing that has the viewer and like the content. Um, and you can share an IPFS hash with other people and suddenly you have like this publishing platform that is completely peer-to-peer -peer and it can publish articles through that. Does this make sense to everyone? So someone that wants to share some data but doesn't really want to host a server um, or have a domain for it, just write that data with a snapshot. And you get this like, they can even have a blog. Whatever they want to share. Questions? Any questions, anybody? I can relay them to the David. All right, we've got a question, David. Can you, David. Can you hear David? He can't, but I'll relay. Okay. Um, if you try to undo something, does it does it work? And if so, does it just undo your local changes, or will it undo other people's rights as well? So right now, um, as I said, like we are using Quill.js, and Quill.js um, just receives the data from the CRDP. So we use the CRDP as like, almost as a key value store, and, and so Quill.js thinks that all the history that has been written so far is from a single user. So if you write something and I do Control C, I'm going to do and do your stuff. But that's like totally about like we like it's not a feature at all. Uh, it is just like something we need to change how Quill.js receives that data so that there is separation of user. Uh, and, and yeah, like okay, cool. Something that will be worth on. He says okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions for the almighty David Dish? <laughs> the one that is at home working? Victor. So how soon are we going to be able to replace HackMD with PeerPad? Question is, how soon are we going to be able to replace HackMD with PeerPad? So um, if you are going to be at MOSFEST, um, that is where we are like working really hard to have a working version where people should start like playing with, or at least feel happy playing with. Um, again, like I, I think like the team will only be comfortable recommending using PeerPad once it gets audited. We want to make sure that like the claims that we are making are more just than using photography, but actually like audited by security specialists so that people can trust software, not just trust the crypto. Right. Um, so maybe uh, this quarter, for sure. Um, hard to predict when you use Cool. All right, further questions, or should Victor take it back over again? Stephen, you look deep in thought. I think you have a question. Mm. All right, take it away, Victor. Okay, so let's make sure we didn't miss anything in the agenda. We have the hack day, the piece heroes. All right, and then connection closing. We had a demo and then peer pad. Do we have anything else we would like to discuss before shutting down this call or any other demos? Otherwise, I think it's time time to close this meeting in that case. David could, could stop the recording. <laughs>